Greg is going to speak on what I love, what everyone here loves, the hustle and the grind and what it takes. Greg, come up here, my man. What's up, everyone? I, I just want to say one thing to everyone. Wake up! <laughs> you have to wake up in life. You have to get up and you have to show up. I see so many people walking around here in South Carolina, Columbus, Ohio, and they're saying, I don't know what to do, big dreamer. I don't know what I want to become. What do I become, Greg? I don't know what you want to become. I don't know what you want to do. That's something you have to answer yourself. Dan Walshman said you got to be kind of weird. Be weird. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Courtright Bill said you got to get out of that cage. That cage is your mind. Mark talked about adversity. Listen, everyone goes through adversity. Everyone has a cage. Everyone has to be weird. You got to have all that combination to make it. Now you're probably saying, Greg, what do you know about adversity? What do you know about the cage? What do you know about being kind of weird? I know nothing. I just had 14 siblings. I'm just the only one to ever make it past the ninth grade. I was just told that I was gonna be the ninth person in prison like my brothers. I was just told that I was gonna be homeless. I was just told that I was gonna murder my wife. I was just told that I was gonna be a loser, a drunk, a drug addict. I was told that I would never have anybody who loved me. I was told that I would never have a job. But I didn't listen to them. I listened to me. People said, how are you gonna graduate? No one ever did it. I had people around me. I had a teacher who saved me, who walked me off that ledge. You have to find someone who will walk you off that ledge and turn you around and get you in the direction of where you're going. And then you have to have that belief in yourself. You have to take that direction. You have to put the mindset and the feet into place and take that action. When I left high school and went to college, people said, you want to open up a business? Your father ain't never worked for no company. Your mother ain't never been no accountant. How are you going to open up a business? I did because I listened to a man who had an eight-year-old daughter named Melinda Lou. Melinda Lou. She could not say Melinda Lou, so she said Wenda. He had a dream to open up a hamburger stand in Columbus, Ohio, but he didn't want to name it Wenda, right? So they named it Wendy's. His name was Dave Thomas. He dropped out of the 10th grade. And when I met him in the 8th grade through my teacher who saved me, he told me, young man, I don't care. You don't need a college degree. You don't need a high GPA. All you have to have is a dream, a grind, and a vision. You have to have that dream. Where do you want to go? Do you want to open a hamburger stand? Do you want to open up uh, hundreds of restaurants like I did? What do you want? What do you want out of life? Do you want that spouse? Do you want to go to college? Do you want to have a job? Everything you can have, Dave Thomas taught me you can have. As long as you have that dream, as long as you wake up every morning, just like Bill Courtright said, just like Dan Waltzman said, you get up, you have to do it. No one owes you squat. The world doesn't care what you want. Let me say it again. The world does not care what you or I want. All the world cares about is what are we willing to do to get what we want. People say, well, Greg, how do I get what I want? You got to sacrifice. You got to sacrifice for who you are, who you want to become. They said, what does that mean? I said, how many hours are you working at your job? I worked 40 hours, Greg. <laughs> no, I worked four years. I slept four years in my business, seven days a week, four weeks out of the month, 12 months out of the year, only leaving one hour a day so I could see my newborn baby daughter to shower. You're telling me you can't work hard? You're telling me you don't have money? And I want to tell you guys to get away from the I people. Anyone ever have the I friends? I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't have the education. Listen, there's seven people you can hang around each. There's seven losers called excuses. There's seven losers, there's seven winners called success. I don't know what you want. I want success. And it all starts here in the mindset. You have to create your vision. You have to create your dream, just like Dave Thomas told me. Dave Thomas said, young man, if you work hard, if you dream big enough, you can have everything you've ever wanted. I have the wife of my dreams. Listen, I did not, I did not speak to us 12 years old. I am now representing Ohio, Kentucky, and West Virginia for the World Championship of Public Speaking in Vancouver, Canada, August 24th. Don't tell me you can't go start a new job. Don't tell me you can't have your own business. You can have everything you want. 
but I can't get it for you. The world's not gonna give it to you. You have to make that action steps. You have to execute. In your office, in your car, on your mirror, in your wallet, you must say, execution is worship in my life. Execution must be worshiped in your life. I don't care what it is, whether you want to run a marathon, whether, whether you want to start a fitness business, or you want to have a, a company called Dream Shine that takes care of people with disabilities, or whether you just want to be a millionaire. What is it that you want? What actions are you willing to take? What sacrifices are you willing to do? The world doesn't give it to you, you have to take it. Someone right now, listen, I'm going through adversity now, someone stole thousands and thousands of dollars. Someone stole my credit cards last night. Someone used my cards in Columbus, Ohio, I'm in South Carolina. My wife texted me, I told Mark it's happening, right? But I understand that's not adversity. Adversity is someone right now at the James Cancer Hospital in Columbus, Ohio, at The Ohio State University, taking their last breath. Adversity is someone right now who their child just got cancer or passed away. And people think I'm gonna cry over some money? I can make money. I can collect cans. I can get a second job. I can drive for Uber if I want to. Money can be replaced. Our lives can't. People ask me all the time, Greg, big dreamer, what's success to you? Success to me is when you wake up and in between that time, when you lay your head down at night, if you ask yourself, hey, big dreamer, did I get to do what I wanted to do in the daytime? If you said yes, then that's a success. Money is not buying you happy. And listen, I love my L-O-V-E, I love money. Dad, we love money, right? Because without money, I cannot send kids to college. Without money, my wife and I cannot raise 16 nieces and nephews. Without money, we cannot help our, our, our neighbors when they lose their jobs as accountants and engineers. We cannot help them make that, so they gotta move. So you have to love money. You can't do nothing without money. Mother Teresa needed money, right? Mother Teresa needed money. So stop thinking. Stop thinking that money doesn't matter. The only, th the only people that money does not matter to are those buried, <laughs> are those buried. So don't fall in that trap of being guilty that you make money, that you make money. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad that you make money. But anything you want in this, uni in this universe, you can have, I promise you. I promise you, you can have it. You, you, you can have this, right? You can have all everything that you want. You can have everything you want. Everyone's telling me move sideways, backwards, front. Oh, no. see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not used to, I'm not used to this little thing. I'm just not used to this little thing, right here, right? Right. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm this way. Sorry, but what I want you guys to understand, you can have everything you want. You know, someone asked me, do you feel sorry for this homeless guy? Hell no, I don't feel sorry for this homeless guy. You know why? Because I have a friend who was homeless for 22 years. 22 years, I was just at the Red, White, and Boom Fireworks, Columbus, Ohio. There's a condo for sale for $6.7 million. That's his third one. 20-some years ago, he slept underneath the bridge of that condominium. Now that's one of three that he has, he's selling it from a $7 million. So I don't care about those. I don't, I'm not crying over those people out there because I can give them a newspaper. I can, give them, I can make them look sweet like Dan Waltzmith, Mark Bernard, Bill. Well, Bill's like me, he's got a shirt on there a little bit. <laughs> But I can, we can teach them how to make money. A millionaire is a mindset. That's why when my friend who made a million dollars a month, I don't know if you guys know this, but the average person, if they work from age 25 to 65, that's 40 years, 40 years. The average American household makes $52,000 a year. If you make 25,000 from age 25, 65, 40, that's only $1 million, that's gross. I had a friend who made $1 million a month. Did you hear what I said? Not, not $10,000 a month, $1 million a month. If you talk to his wife and kids in Dublin, Ohio now, they would say we'd rather be homeless because he pulled a gun in his mouth and blew his brains out because he was on Wall Street making $1.7 million a month. So you tell me money makes you happy. Tell me money's gonna make, how many people in here is gonna make a million dollars in their lifetime? Very slim. He made it a month. So get out of your head that millions of dollars are gonna make you happy. I know people make $57,000 a year, they take two vacations, they're happy. You have to chase the lifestyle. You wanna chase what you want. You wanna play pinball games every single day? Figure out how to make money off that pinball machine. You have to find out what you love first.
and then you can find out how to increase that money. He just told you how to make money. He just told you how to make money. Listen, if I want to sell a million books, come on, y'all ain't listen to me. I just told someone that all they have to do to make a million dollars is sell, is sell 50,000 books. They said, Big German, how are you gonna sell 50,000 books? I said, Columbus, Ohio. In Ohio, there's 1,800 schools, 100 books. I don't look at selling 50,000 books. I look at selling 100 books 500 times. 500 times, 100 books. There's 1,800 schools in Ohio. That's talking about New Zealand where I'm selling books. My book just went to Japan. It's in China. And you're telling me you can't sell 50, I'm not selling 50,000 books. I'm selling 100 books. That's how you get to it. It's the, it's the habits. Bill talks about the habits. It's the habits that we millionaires do. It's the daily habits. There's a reason why Bill's built different than I am. His daily habits are different than mine. There's a reason why I have more money than this young lady right here. She's younger, but it's the habits that I do. It's the have financial habits I do every single day. Habits will determine your life. I used to weigh 200, 365 pounds. I weigh 240, because I took some of the habits that Bill talked about. You can do the same thing to become a millionaire, but it all starts right here. It all starts right here in the mind. And I'll tell you about a story in my book about my friend Deborah I went to high school with. Listen to this very carefully. Deborah and I went to high school together. Deborah was supposed to be the number one person in our class, the valedictorian, right? I graduated 454th out of 455 people. Deborah was supposed to be the valedictorian, but she had three babies in the 10th grade. We talk about adversity, three babies in the 10th grade. That's adversity, right? Growing up in inner city, Columbus, Ohio, she drops out of high school. I graduate 454th out of 455, right? That's great. That's not great. At age 40, I see her husband, he's, he's crying. He said, bro, you gotta come see your sister, why? You gotta come, I gotta go do something great. Come right now. You gotta come be the big dreamer. She's your best friend other than your wife. I get to the house, he said, there she is, she's crying. She's got snot all down her nose, you know, like a little six-year-old kid. She's a big, tall woman. She won the state in, in, the, in the hundreds, in the, in the hurdles. And she's crying. I said, what's going on? I thought when the kids died. I said, what happened with the kids? She said, nothing happened with the kids, Greg. I said, what, what's going on? She, Greg, she's crying. You know what? I'm 40 years old. I'm working, I'm working at a warehouse at, at Rickenbacker Air Base loading trucks. I'm a nobody. I looked at my wife and I said, that's what you brought me here. That's what you brought me here for. That's what you brought me. She said, Greg, stop it. I'm not like you. I said, you're damn straight. You're not like me. You were supposed to graduate number one. I graduated number 454. I said, get up. She says, not that easy. It is. Look what I've done. I said, so wipe the snot off your nose. Get up, pull your big girl panties up. Let's get you in, get your GED, get you at Columbus State Community College, put you in Ohio State and that's it. What do you want to do, Deb? She says, you know what I want to do? I want to become a teacher, but it's not that easy. At 40, she didn't listen to me. At 41, 42, she called and says, Greg, I got my GED. Got my GED. At 51, she's not a teacher. She's a principal in the south side of Chicago. At 40, 41, 42. She calls my wife up eight months ago. She says, Greg, big dreamer, are you sitting down? I said, no, I'm saying, sit down. I said, why? She said, just sit down, got some news. I said, what is it? She said, are you ready? I said, yeah. She said, are you ready? I said, yeah, we're listening. What is it? She says, I'm running for superintendent Southside Chicago. Greg, are you there? My wife's looking at me like, you gotta stop it, you gotta stop it. Greg, are you there? Honey, I think Greg, I think he hung up on the phone. Greg, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Deb. You're not excited. No, I'm not. I'm not impressed at all. She said, I'm going to cry. You're the one who got me out of that warehouse to become a teacher and a principal. I did not want you to become a teacher or a principal. I had higher goals like my teacher who saved my life, like Dave Thomas who saved my life. I didn't want you to become a teacher, a principal. Those were the steps that you had to take to become the superintendent. I wanted you to become a superintendent because I saw your dream, your vision. I saw how you did your daily grind at 41, 42, 43, all the way to 51. See, sometimes we have to take those steps to get to the next level, as Mark always says. As Bill says, we got to get the case. As Dan says, be a little weird. She was a little weird. People said, what are you doing going back to get your GED in high school at 41 years old? Right? 
Now they're calling her doctor. Now they're calling her doctor. And someone once said, but Greg, look where she started. She started at 41 years old. Listen, I have two friends that have PhDs, right? Two friends, two friends. When you go talk to me, say, hey, when do you think my brother Muhammad got his? They say, Muhammad's smart. Seven, eight years? Nah. How long do you think his wife Lauren? She's pretty smart. Seven or eight years? Yeah, she got hers in six years. My buddy Muhammad got his in 16. But the greatest thing on those, on those diplomas say, there's no date. There's no date. When people see me, they can't believe. They say, Greg, you must graduate. Listen, you're pretty sweet. You don't know all these things. You got to graduate top 10. I said, go to the next 10. Go to the next 10. Keep going down by 10s all the way to like 454th. It doesn't matter where I was. It matters where was I going. And what got me out of there was releasing that bird out of the cage that Bill talked to. See, I used to always have low self-esteem. I didn't start speaking until three years ago when I joined this thing called Toastmasters because a friend of mine named Les Brown who wrote my forward, the world's leading motivational speaker said, young man, you have to go. You have to go join this thing called Toastmasters. I didn't believe I had a gift. I didn't believe I had a gift. I thought my whole life was restaurants all my life. And now I enjoy speaking all over, to everywhere, to everyone. Someone once asked me, who do I speak to? Les Brown told me, young man, you speak to those with blue collar, white collars, those who only have a collar. He says, you speak to a rocket, they write a check, right? But I had that vision, I had that daily grind, I had that daily hustle. Everything you guys want, I'm telling you, I'm example A. I'm example A of what you can become if you believe up here. If you get the crap out of your mind, I'm not my brothers and sisters. My teacher who saved me in 1984, when my principal asked me to drop out of high school. Why? Because all 12 of my siblings dropped out before me. When he asked me to drop out and I dropped out my very first day, 1981, my teacher who my daughter is named after, she gave me the reason why, the reason why I had to become the first person ever to go past ninth grade and graduate high school. And then she taught me how I could do that. She taught me how I can do that and the way it was to get the crap out of my mind. She says, Greg, you are not your family. You are who you believe who you are. That's why I have to ask each and every one of you, everyone who's watching this, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your abilities. You have to step into your abilities. You have to unleash your greatness. And how do you unleash your greatness? Is this. Bill talked about it. It's the cage that you have in your mind. The only reason why you're not successful is because of you. Don't blame your mommy, don't blame your daddy, don't blame your brother in prison. It's you. You are your own worst enemy. I was my own worst enemy. Bill was his worst enemy. Dan Walsh, Mark, Mark. We have to stop blaming each other. We have to wake ourselves up. We are dying every day. We're not getting yesterday back. Tomorrow's not promised. The only thing we have is right now, N-O-W, no opportunity wasted. One of these young men here who's running the camera, he can go work for CNN if he wants to. No matter what Dan says, I say, Bill or Mark, it means squat to him. He has to go do it himself. So stop thinking the world needs to give you something. Stop thinking mommy and daddy didn't leave you something. That's all bull crap. You have to go out and get it. You want a dollar? Go get it. Go get it, you want information? And we're so much old, everyone says buy my program, buy this and this and this. The program's not making you. I had a kid once call me and say, Greg, I spent 75,000 on Tony Robbins, 12,000 on this guy, 6,000 on this guy. Can you be my daily mentor for free? My family thinks I'm crazy gonna spend all this money. I'm thinking, okay, 12,000, 75,000, 6,000, and what are you doing? I work at 7-Eleven. Well, there's nothing wrong with working at 7-Eleven. But when you spend that kind of money and you're asking someone to be your daily mentor for free, right? And I got 40 years of being in business, of, of overcoming and succeeding. I said, young man, I'll charge you $2,500 a month. He said, but I got all the information. I said, you got the information, but now I'm going to teach you how to take that information and turn it into daily use. I'm going to teach you how to take that action. See, Tony Robbins isn't holding your hands. Those other two coaches, they're not talking to you on the phone, are they? Can you call Tony Robbins up? Can you call Tony Robbins up? No, you can't, but you can call the big dreamer. But you don't want to spend $2,500, but you want me to give you 40 years of information how to make it in the real world. See, information means squat. 
You can read all the magazines, you can read all the books. I hear people all the time say, I've read 300 books today, Greg. I've read 400 books. I say, congratulations. My little niece, Xavier Seven, he mastered one Dr. Seuss book called The Snitches. The Snitches. I have, a, I have a friend, a brother, who has a book called From Forbes to Felon, From Felon to Forbes. His favorite book is The Snitches. He was a felon, and Forbes said, you're so smart, Forbes hired him. Forbes. My nephew Xavier mastered the book The Snitches, but you want to tell me you read 500 books and you haven't done squat? Squat? Come on, wake up. Wake up, don't smell the rose. I hate wake up and smell the rose. Wake up and go pick the damn rose. Grab it. See, I don't believe what my favorite book says, that you know, if you teach a man how to fish, he can eat the rest of his life, that's bull crap. I want to teach my grandkids how to make the wealth to buy the freaking lake. To buy the lake. I don't like fishing. I'm teaching my grandkids how to, how to have generational wealth. I'm teaching them to go buy the lake, go by the river. So they can go out there every day and they just go pick a fish, right? That's what you have to do. And it all starts here with the mindset. It all starts with the belief. It all starts to believe. You heard the story of my friend Deborah. You heard the story about me. Why is it that we can do it? But most of you out there are still not doing anything with your life. It's called belief. It's called belief. The belief that we can do anything that we set our minds to. I always told my daughter and my nieces and my employees this. If you see a guy driving around a sweet Corvette like Bill did, you know you can have it because Bill got it. If you, if you want to live in a 10,000 square foot house like I do with five acres of golf course, you know that you can have it every day you ride down because you see Greg Walker living in the house. You see Greg Walker cutting those five acres of that golf course lawn. So that means you can have it. But why can't you have it? Because you want to cry. You want to cry. I just got a divorce. I just got this. Wow, wow, wow. Someone just lost their legs. There's a guy on YouTube named Vic who was born with no legs, no arms. He's water skiing. He's, he's snow skiing. He, he's paragliding. But you want to complain? You want to complain that, that your mommy and daddy got a divorce? Imagine waking up eight years old and you hear a boom. And you see your drunken father, your drug addict father there. And you look at me, holds what you know now is the bottle of Jack Daniels and the gun. And you see your mother at the bottom of the floor. And he looks at you and says, boy, that's what happens when you open your mouth. You want to tell me you have problems? You want to tell me you have a little problem? Imagine growing up where everyone says you're going to prison by the time you're 18, just like your nine brothers. Imagine someone tell principal telling you to drop out of high school because your 12 siblings dropped out before you. And he says, you're number 13, young man. Has anyone ever told you that's an unlucky number? I never heard that before until he told me. So you want to complain about your damn small problems? Right now, someone's living underneath a bridge and cardboard boxes, but you don't see how you don't like your 2,200 square foot house? Someone's saying, who's that dude that drove here from Florida in that suite? I, I'm not like, I, I'm nothing because I don't have a Corvette. But we see a guy on a scooter, a 60 year old man on a scooter and he's smiling at us. What perception of life do you have? How do you look at life? Do you look at yourself because you don't have a Rolex watch, all you have is a Fitbit? Do you say that's success? And listen, I was there. I was there. I used to think that if I didn't wear my $35,000 Cartier watch, I'm nothing. Now this keeps me alive because I know what life is about. I know what true success is. I want you to understand what is success to you. Is it having your daughter right here? Is it having your daughter right here? Is it, is it having a friend here? Is it having great friends where we talk to people, going down the street, talking to the homeless man It doesn't even ask you for money? He hears my story and he says, young man, you are going better place than you ever know. He didn't ask me for a dime. He encouraged me. You have to look at life in a whole different way. You have to understand this will get you anything that you want. Stop telling people where you came from. Stop telling people how you don't have the nice pair of shoes. You don't have the nice sweet Nikes like I do. Think of someone who doesn't have feet. 
You complain about your job, stop Say My neighbor one time says, Greg, I bet you hate cutting that, that green grass. I, I bet you hate putting those long stripes in there. I said, I don't have to, I get to. I bet you hate going to all those businesses. I don't have to, I get to. Stop complaining about your life. Stop looking about what you don't have or what's wrong and start looking at what you have right. What you have in your life right now. So listen, I want everyone in here to understand, I say this all the time, we are all too big to dream small. We don't go to the moon, we put 12 men on the moon. We are not going to the moon, why? Because it's small. In space it's very small. So stop dreaming small, start dreaming big. Find someone, if you want anything, find someone who has what you have and go to them and say, how do I get there? And I guarantee you that successful person, that millionaire will say, dream, grind, hustle. That's all you need to succeed. So everyone have a great day and go live your dreams.